Hey, welcome to a new episode of Life on the Research Trail. I'm Ron Coddington, editor and publisher of Military Images Magazine. And today I want to talk about a unique breed of general. And that's those, that rare group who has the ability to command and do it with unbelievable fighting qualities in battle, um, but also has the ability to inspire and reach out to the soldiers that they commanded. They're really, when I, when I think of the generals who have that ability to do both, there's not as many as you think. Some of them, you don't even know. And that's one of them here. Um, his name is Charles Leopold Matthews of the 5th Iowa Infantry. And I think of him and other generals that fit into this category as the every man's general. And he is a perfect example of that. He was born in Prussia. He was military educated and university educated there. He came to the United States about 1849 and headed west and made his home in Burlington, Iowa. He's going about his life as many Americans did until the Civil War changes everything. He goes back to his days in Prussia, his military education and volunteers for his adopted country. He winds up being uh, an officer in the 5th Iowa Infantry and at the Battle of Ayuka. He distinguishes himself, he distinguishes the regiment, and he earns his Brigadier General Star. Uh, a, a year later, at the Battle of Missionary Ridge, he suffers a severe head wound that effectively ends his military career. He returns to Iowa, he goes into politics on the state level, and he dies in 1868. Barely, barely outlives the war. So a really interesting individual, one of these immigrants who came to America fought for their new homeland. And so uh, after his death, his fellow senators in Iowa do the kind of thing that many Americans did at the time. They passed a series of resolutions, which was their way of recording for posterity what made this individual special, why they valued this individual. Now, part of this is uh, this idea of resolutions really does connect to larger questions about uh, rituals around death, especially Victorian death, um, the good death, um, the idea of memorialization, all of this plays a role. And Matthews, of course, is no exception to this rule because he gained so much respect from his fellow senators, because the soldiers loved him so much, because some of these senators had also served in the Civil War and knew him and knew his fighting qualities and knew that ability that he had to reach out to soldiers. They passed a series of resolutions. One of those resolutions I want to read to you because I think it gets to the heart of what it is to be an every man's general. So here it is, quote, as an officer, he possessed that happy combination of faculties which enabled him without relaxing the discipline of those under his command to sympathize with them and to make them feel that while he was above them in point of rank in the service, he stood on the same plane as a man and a patriot. Hence, he was regarded by his soldiers as a friend whom they could trust and on whom they could call in time of need with full assurance that they would receive not only his sympathy and counsel, but material aid if necessary to the extent of dividing the last dollar in the pocket of their beloved general. Now, I, the way that I think about it, he was someone who lived by the golden rule. This was Charles Leopold Matthews having that rare combination of leadership qualities on the, on the battlefield 
and the ability to inspire his men. So that's my story for today. I'm going to take a step off the research trail for now, but I will be back with more videos, so stay tuned on Facebook. You can find the whole archive on YouTube. And um, until that next video, I wish you happy trails.